accessory structure. So I'd uh, suggest that uh, perhaps if the motion maker and uh, you could have a motion to amend that just to reflect the public notice. Uh, so moved. So moved. Yep. Support. Support. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Baumgartner. Okay. Uh, Smith? Yes. Mr. Sound? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. Mr. Spots? Yes. Mr. Evans? Yes. And Mr. Allen? Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Okay. And next item is the approval of minutes for our meeting from November 13th, 2017. Do any members have any suggested changes? Mr. Allen? Yes. On the uh, it's, uh, 07 17, I believe was the number. Um, I was a May vote, oh, not, not a yes vote. Yeah, on uh, page four, where it says it's William Wire, fourth line down. Uh, I think you meant to say uninter uninterrupted power source. Yes. Last one, interrupted one. Yeah. <laughs> I found one on page one, also present. It appears the city manager's name is not, not correct. Any manager? Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah. Well, I can you run name wrong? The fish I knew about for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all know. Any additional changes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Motion support. Support. Any discussion? Mr. Baumgarten. Motion. Who's the motion maker? Hey, Mr. Allen. And Mr. Jason. Second. And that was to uh, Mr. Allen. Mr. Uh, is on to approve as amended, correct? Correct. Yes. Mr. Kassan? Yes. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Uh, Mr. Butts? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And I'm Mr. Uh, or Chair Evans? Yes. Okay. Okay. Next item is our item for appeal. This is application number PBA 08-17. For property in Oakshire Avenue, uh, Mr. Baumgart, can you give us a summary? Thank you, sir. The other thing, Tim Chapman is requesting a uh, the, to allow a pool to remain in place. Um, the pool, as noted in the packet, 
is falls below the required setbacks as listed in Zoning Chapter 138-59, both A and B. Um, there is less than six feet from a fence as a, required by A, and as required by B, it is less than six feet from an accessory structure in the garage as well as the um, air conditioning unit. So uh, Mr. Chapman is, is here. Uh, if you'll recall, this was partially discussed at the previous meeting with uh, where the need was for both A and B uh, to receive a variance in order to for this pool to remain in place. So that is the uh, it's a typical review of this. Thank you. Any board members have any questions for staff? I, I do have one. Is the, is the variance for uh, six feet from a fence or actually from the side of the property? Uh, it specifically states fence in the ordinance. A fence, okay. All right. Mr. Allen? Yes. Uh, Mr. Bobker, did anybody subsequently from the last meeting until now have a discussion with the pool company or the pool installer? Uh, not, as far as I know, no one's staff reached out, no. Okay. Uh, the building official may have, but he just may not report the back to me. Okay. All right. Well, at this time, I'll ask the applicant, Mr. Chapman, to come up. Sir, as you're aware, you were here last month and told us everything you would like to tell us. Yes. This is a different case simply because of the second items that were added. So for uh, clarity and also I think cleanest action by the board, it would be best for you to uh, pretend you're starting over. Yeah. And let us know whatever you think you need to let us know. Very good. Okay. Um, so back in, I want to say around May. Uh, we went to the pools and spas store to uh, discuss the purchase of a pool and um, brought in the, the dimensions of our backyard, the lot, and um, from there we were advised as to what size pools would be um, allowed, or not allowed, what size pools we could work with. And so um, upon doing that, we uh, chose the pool that we have, which is 15 and a half by 26, uh, oval shaped above ground. And um, at that point, there was no red flags. There was no suggested, you know, to, to check with the city, to check with any variance uh, or any code infractions. And um, being that this is the first external um, anything that we've put in, in any residence that I've had, this is my third residence, um, I'm, I'm fairly unfamiliar with that process. So um, with no suggestion from the pool store and then no suggestion from the, the installer, um, I wasn't given any reason to believe that there was any potential violation. So after the pool had been installed, um, I decided to take down the overhead wire, which was really the only thing that was suggested that we look at. And for the safety of our children um, and ourselves, we should probably get that taken down. So after using the pool for uh, literally three days, we decided to go through and, and take down the overhead wire and have it buried underground. And upon doing so, getting the electrical inspection, that was the first notice that we got that there was uh, infractions. And so, um, you know, going through all that, uh, basically there was, like I said, there was no um, heads up as to uh, this should be checked out or this is the, the requirements that we're working with. And so. Long story short, gentlemen, we were faced with a situation where we, we funded the pool, we, we had it uh, built, and then found out afterwards that there were infractions. And so, um, you know, when we, when we applied for the, uh, the event here today, um, we, we had it to where we knew that we, it had to be a certain distance, uh, six feet from a fence, six feet from the air conditioner, and six feet from the garage. Um, in the time after the pool was built, we had a six-foot-tall privacy fence, uh, vinyl fence put around the entire perimeter with uh, a self-latching gate with a padlock on that as well to take precautions to uh, make sure that safety is, is the first priority. And um, so, you know, that's where we stand today it was uh, something that was, was not to my knowledge of being anything uh, around any infractions. And so, you know, my 
my request is that we, we take that into consideration, um, understanding that safety precautions have been have been taken and um, you know, we'll be in full compliance with anything and everything that needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you. For just one moment, sir. Yeah, sure. Do any board members have any questions for the other? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. At this point, I'll open up to the uh, public comment portion of the meeting. Is there any members of the public that would like to speak regarding this request? Seeing none, Mr. Baumgart, have we received any correspondence regarding this? I have not seen any correspondence regarding this matter. Okay, thank you. I'll close the public hearing. I'll bring it back to the board for discussion. Mr. Chair? Mr. Smith. Um, we started the discussion on this last week, and I guess I should preface my approach as I look at things and I try to figure out how to make them work, uh, you know, rather than starting from a default position of no. Uh, looking at this application, having been out to the site, there, there's some things there that are unique, is, is not a word I would use, but it's one word kind of required use. If you look at Mr. Baumgartner's report, which I love these things. This is perfect. Look at the picture uh, that he's got. Uh, Applicant's home is outlined in red. Look at the placement of his garage. Uh, this is uh, some of the older homes in Berkeley, things that were built right after World War II. The garages are pushed as far forward as they can get out of it. My understanding is that contractors did that so they could save on concrete. But what it does is it puts this guy in a position where he can't really put a useful pool in his yard. Um, you know, just having gone out to the site and trying to figure out what you could fit in there, you're, I'm thinking maybe 9 by 12, 9 by 15, a relatively small pool. If you're going to try to put a couple of kids in there, it's, it's useless. So. Uh, as I look at the application, I think you know, there's a lot of reasons that uh, we, we might want to consider uh, proving the variance. The issue I've got is one of, uh, for one, safety. You've got the safety of the applicant and his family. And there's also another issue of uh, liability with the city. Uh, as I, I look at this, my background in the public utilities I'd like to make sure that should we go ahead and approve this guy's variance, uh, that we're not putting the city in a position where you know, now we've assumed liability if there is some kind of a personal injury. He's, he's close to the garage. He's uh, close to his uh, air conditioning condenser. The garage can't be solved. The air conditioning condenser can be grounded or even the circuit breaker be replaced with a uh, ground fault unit. So if there's a, a water related issue, with the uh, air conditioning condenser, that, that can be handled uh, quite easily. The proximity to the garage and the fence, uh, those are, uh, my understanding is they're safety, safety concerns. So part of the reason that poles are required to be set back from fences are that when you're using your skimmer, which back in the old days was a long aluminum pole, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be pushing it up into the power lines, which you know, that creates a problem. Um, in, in his situation, there is no power line along the side lot line. There is no overhead power line. Uh, he's far enough away from the back fence line and the power lines that he would have to try. And, and he couldn't even have a skimmer in the pool if he wanted to get up in the power lines. So the safety issues, um, the only one I've got is jumping off the garage. And you know, we, we do have a reason for the six foot uh, distance. And, but if the city if the city isn't on the hook for liability, proving this thing, I'm, I'm uh, I tend to be in support. Teeing that up, I'd love to hear what everybody else thinks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Do any of the board members have any, Mr. Allen? I, just, I, I continue to be dismayed at the fact that someone who has done business in this community 
for this many years that something like this could occur. And when the installer was recommended by the purchasing outlet, that they would have known, because obviously they've installed pools here too. I just, it, it stymies me to think that there wasn't any checking that went on. And uh, while I agree with what Mr. Smith is saying in part, um, I, I have to go with the letter of the law on this. It's pretty clear what we need. And uh, I appreciate the safety fix, but and I, I'm concerned myself about stepping into the middle of any kind of protracted court case. Thank you. Any other board members? I'm, I'm, I'm curious, um, from an insurance standpoint, while we're talking about liability, from an insurance standpoint, what what the applicant's insurance company would, would, would say about about having this so close to the so close to the garage and the fence. I guess I should ask that while the applicant was up here, but uh, we can have him come back up and if there's any other questions we can ask him, so we'll make sure that we have him up to answer your question. Okay. Um, any other board discussion, Mr. Kirby? Yeah, I do. Just you know, looking at that uh, this middle here that we have with the overhead picture of the property looking at our schematic that was drawn and, and turned in well they just don't look the same I you know looking at the schematic it looks like we have some or the, the overhead looks like we have a small shed of some type back there and then looking at our garage it shows you know 32 feet long 14 foot 7 wide and approaches over into <coughs> I think it perhaps was corrected. Kind of the uh, wrong property was circled red. Was it? Thank you, baby. I see on the uh, application 132014. And, and, and I, I know from working with these aerials, as part of my job, they're not always, you know, this year's photos. Yeah, there's, there's more so than that. Is that a newer garage? Uh, oh, is there see anything in the yes. Oh, did you build it? Uh, I had a contractor build it. Do you want me to approach the? Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's an outdated. Okay. Maybe we should address those, sir. Yes, sure. Like there's a few questions in regards to the garage. Yes. And also, Mr. Jason's question about insurance. Okay. Um, I'll respond to Mr. Jason's uh, question first. Um, as, as I was waiting for the process of the Board of Appeals, I was advised by a couple of um, friends um, to kind of wait on the insurance issue until we figured out that, you know, it's something that we will be able to keep. So um, it's been kind of on the back burner for me to inquire with them. And in speaking with, um, with Mr. Smith uh, at the last meeting, um, the recommendation um, was to possibly get a, um, I'm trying to think of the, the term, but basically like a, a condition put into the insurance, um, right. basically that protects the city for liability. And, and in that case as well, I don't know the, the legalities or the logistics of how it would all work, but um, my family and I are, are more than willing to um, sign a, a liability waiver to relieve the city of Berkeley from any um, any potential uh, litigation should anything happen, um, and again, that's just that's just looking at worst case scenario. Um, to repeat, it is just a, an above ground pool. There is no deck structure. I had a question. Could you talk about a little bit about the garage? Yes, the garage. Um, that was built um, two years ago. It was completed last or a year ago from April. So we had in 2015. Um, a contractor come out and they broke ground in uh, in April um, and actually it got finished I want to say in around June so the garage itself is just under two years old okay um, mr. Smith is that, is that your it, it, it answers my question it's not what I wanted to hear okay prior to that there was an existing shed and so what here in that that was the description of the aerial photo there was a uh, a 10 by 10 
um, portable shed that was there that was obviously replaced by the, the building of the garage. And the garage, uh, it was permits were pulled through, through the city as well. So. Very good. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll turn it back over to the board for any further comments or discussion. Mr. Chair? Mr. Smith. Uh, my whole uh, thought process has been kind of blown out of the water here. The uh, second condition that we have is you know, whether or not the, the property owner or the applicant uh, created a problem. And in this case, we've got an applicant who built a garage that created a problem. Um, I'm, I just assumed that was an older building and that was sloppy work on my part. But, now, knowing that the applicant has created his own problem by putting the garage where it is, I can't, in good conscience, you know, think we're uh, doing a favor by working with somebody that <coughs> has created the problem. If the garage was existing, I would be pushing to grant the variance, but I, I can't. Any other board members? I have challenges with voting yes on this for some of the reasons that have been discussed. I liken this to perhaps uh, 10 pounds of uh, potatoes in an eight pound bag. There's a lot of things the ordinance allows us to use our uh, backyards for. I don't see an unusual condition with the property. Uh, while it is an extremely unfortunate circumstance that I believe this gentleman is being very upfront with us and has received some guidance that he sh didn't receive some guidance that he should have got from a long established business in our community that really knows better. Um, but I don't see the practical difficulty uh, in this matter. Um, I think a good argument could be made that uh, the property owner uh, did contribute to a number of things on this property. Um, I'm not sure it would do substantial justice to anyone in the area. Um, I'm not convinced that putting this this much in the backyard is going to uh, not adversely impact the neighbors. So with those, I'm planning on voting no on this. So. Any additional discussion? I think we're ready for uh, Mr. Allen. Yeah, one of the things you need to keep in mind with the six foot setback from a fence line or a property line, whatever the case may be, sometimes one and the same, is when an above ground pool lets loose, you're looking at a major flood and they like to keep them as far away from a property line as possible for that very reason. Gotcha. Had one happen in my backyard, I know how much water is left. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <coughs> so there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Move to to deny the applicant's request on uh, PBA zero eight one seven. Okay, we have a motion to deny. Do we have a second? Second, Mr. Allen. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a roll call vote, Mr. Bonner. Mr. Kirby? Yes. Uh, Mr. Butts? Yes. Mr. Emmons? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. And Mr. Kazan? Yes. And Chair Evans? Yes. Okay, motion to deny is uh, passed. Mr. Chair? Mr. So, question for Mr. Baumgarten. Yes. Um, I would anticipate that the applicant will now be having a conversation with his, his pool installer. Uh, is there anything that the city typically does in the case of a uh, uh, building code violation by way of documenting things that, that they may be able to use, or may be able to use to support his uh, arguments? No, this is uh, the Vince Gretz going to conclusion. That's, I'm going to address that with the building official tomorrow and find out what, how we can aid the applicant. In, in any way at this point. So I'd, I'd like to be able to do something like that for him. Thank you. That would be great. 
Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Next item on the agenda is uh, other business. Any board members or staff have any other business they'd like to bring up? Yes, Mr. We, we, we wish everybody a happy holiday season and a good uh, 2018. And uh, I appreciated that everyone that came to, came to participate this year in community involvement. That's where I got my start. And it's good to see so many people, uh, maybe not today because of the blizzard outside, but uh, every other meeting has been well attended this year, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Mr. L. Uh, yeah, we were talking earlier, and there's been a number of remarks made about this background sheet that Matt had come up with, and I do really like it. One of the things I'd like to see in the future, particularly if it's a new construction asking for a variance, that we be provided with some proof of ownership because okay. of the fact that variances go with the property and not with the requester. And that would be very handy to have because there were a number of them and I asked the question, who owns this property? Because it was the same guy building on two pieces of property and it was owned by two different names. Gotcha. It would be nice to have that. I know there's ways that the uh, communities can look up the register of deeds and actually print yep. the deeds if indeed the applicant mm -hmm. doesn't provide that. It wouldn't be necessary for everything, particularly if someone just wanting to do an addition on their house or whatever, but new construction, I think it's important that we know. Okay. Any other board members with any comments or other business? Just wish to. Wish like wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. All right. Likewise. Likewise. Along those same lines, yes, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, enjoy the snow. <laughs> Glad you got here. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Very good. Uh, Council Liaison Report. Mr. Cadet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Went a long hiatus. Uh, <coughs> after discussing it with Mayor Turbrock, um, and we decided that, you know, he was concerned about me having too many meetings to go to. We don't meet all the time, so uh, I'm going to remain as your liaison. I'm happy to say I want to thank you guys for all the work you do. Um, I'll never stop thanking you guys. You the volunteer work you do is awesome. Uh, just from a council standpoint, uh, next Monday, a week from today, in this room, we will be choosing a replacement for Mr. Turbeck's two years remaining on his seat, and there are six final candidates for that. Um, it's been a great process. I'm happy to say 20 people applied, and uh, you know, it shows a lot of people are interested in what's happening in our city, and I hope that continues. Um, and for those 20 people, uh, obviously 19 aren't going to make it. I hope they remain or become board members on commission. We have a lot of openings and volunteers is what run that's what runs this city. We are very fortunate with the volunteers we have. Also I want to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah, which starts tomorrow <coughs> night. Merry Christmas and a happy new year and prosperous 2018. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now's the time for any member of the public to <coughs> They'd offer, offer the board any comments. Does any member of the public like to address the board? Okay. Can I, okay. Oh, yes. Hi, Wendy Zabramski, 3340 Gardner Avenue, Berkeley. Um, thank you for your decision on that. I guess I would be concerned that the, the uh, I'm assuming this is this place in Berkeley, that they should, you know, I, I mean, be checked to make sure they are, you know, they, they know that, you know, um, um, your permits are required, and, you know, that, I mean, that just seems kind of scary that somebody in our own mess has, you know, not done that, if in fact that's what happened. I just, um, pretty scary, you know, our own business, and how many others have flown under the radar. Sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I see no one else, so I'll, I'll adjourn the meeting. Everybody have a great holiday. All right. Thank you.